Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live inside The Cube in Las Vegas for IBM Edge 2015. This is The Cube, our flagship program, out to the events. Expect the signal noise. I'm John Furrier. My co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Tom Rosamilli, Senior Vice President of Systems at IBM. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you guys. Good um, to see you again. See you, Tom. Seems to always be in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we live out here. Yeah. You guys are making some big changes. Obviously, IBM's positioning around systems, software, workloads. In the shift and inflection point of the market is pretty hot right now. So there's a lot of transformation, a lot of build out, a lot of support of legacy, both costs, structure side, and also top line driving revenue. Um, what was that theme in the keynote today that you talked about, obviously, uh, here at the show? There's a lot of you know, old line storage server system stuff going on. What's, what's the big trend and what are you guys promoting? I, I think the story is one that we've been telling, but it's really taken up, uh, taken off fast now. It's around this transformation, the dig digital transformation that it's occur that's occurring. And it's a profound shift because you know, mobile changes everything. Uh, the number of uh, connected devices by 2020 is, is got, got to be like 26 billion. I mean, that's you know how many per, per per person on Earth. It's amazing what we're seeing. So what's happening is it's not just about mobile. It's about what mobile enables. It's not just about Internet of Things. It's what's now doable. What's now learnable. What can I analyze? What can I act on? So I, I want to take that data. That and there's huge amounts of data being produced. 2.6 quintillion bytes of data every day is generated, and 90% of it is not analyzed. So, and, and some of it's very, uh, you know, period uh, focused. It's like, you know, tomorrow that won't be relevant anymore. It's relevant right now. And, and so people are really wrestling with turning the data into actionable insights. So in, in all of this, you need infrastructure. You need some cool stuff that will enable me to have those mobile transactions land somewhere. And actually they expand, because when you say purchase, you know, think about all the things that go on behind the scenes. You know, you've got who you are, they know your profile, you picked a product to purchase, I got to decide whether I replenish inventory, I got to decide where it ships from, and I got to see how you're paying for it, all with one click. So we've, we've seen up to 100 transactions get kicked off from one mobile transaction. So think about yeah. that as people go into more and more connected devices. So you guys talk about outcomes all the time. IBM's always had great messaging around, oh, business outcomes, and also systems of engagement, systems of record, and then under the hood is all the, 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 the geek tech stuff, the systems, the engine, if you will, the hardware, software, whatnot. Yep. But this show is a lot more integrated uh, conversations. We heard, we heard big data up to the stage with smarter cities. The Twitter relationship is part of that grant with Memphis. Right. The mayor of Memphis yeah, was up there. Congratulations to those cities that won. I mean, these are real world examples. Um, are you seeing more and more of that, and less of the speeds and feeds? Oh, much and, more. And I mean, give some examples. You need you need what underlies that. You need the speeds and feeds, but it's much more about business value. So it, it's really more about. What can I get done? What can I know? What can I analyze? What can I turn into ins uh, actionable insights? And underneath that, I do need speeds and feeds. I do need how much you know, memory space there is. I do need the geeky stuff. Like when we announced the Z13, we talked about this before. You know, it was never a good idea, and you, you know this well, never a good idea to co-locate transaction processing and analytics. The reason is, I can quickly switch processor, I can quickly switch, uh, switch your IO priority, but the memory is filled with, with your analytics data. And so when a transaction arrives, I got no shot. Nothing's in cache, nothing's in memory. I got to reload everything and, and the response time goes to heck. So people don't do it, or didn't do it. We tripled the memory space with the Z13, so it's the geeky part. But the underlying technology allows us to co-locate transactions and, and, uh, and analytics. And we embedded math libraries into DB2 from SPSS that allow you to do fraud checking, any money laundering, all kinds of math algorithms to do it in line. I'm not suggesting that you flood a mainframe with analytics workload, but I am suggesting that in the middle of a transaction, before I say approved, I want to know this isn't a fraudulent transaction. But this transaction. is early, this is an indicator, so you're talking about a use case of that's a very high-end use case. Right. Maybe it's a flagship-like use case, but that's more going to be the norm down the road. That's what you're getting I think at. so, and you know, real full-time encryption that we see, I mean, it, it, it's really important. We, day doesn't go by, you don't read about some cyber attack somewhere in the world, or everywhere in the world, and you're not reading about the ones that people aren't writing about, they're still happening. You know, hopefully nobody finds out. But those are happening every day. So the bow wave of mobile, 
the capabilities that analytics provide to, to turn into actionable insights. You know, people are doing things with hybrid cloud. You mentioned systems of engagement to systems of record. You got to connect those. And so the middleware really has to keep that, that connection available. To well, us. I like how you guys are connecting this notion, Tom, of digital transformation with infrastructure matters. So I have a question on the client base. When you, when you go out, you talk to a lot of clients. Um, do they, how much are they sensitized to this digital transformation? Seems like everybody's talking about it. Are they on offense, defense, or both? I think it's, it's all over the spectrum because some of them are leading the, char the change, leading the charge. Uh, I've got examples of mobile, of banking in the world where mobile transactions are more than half their workload, more than half. And the statistic I gave this morning or this afternoon here was that of millennials, 82% of them do their banking mobile. So as we age into this, it's only going to get harder for people who aren't ready to deal with that bow wave of, of uh, transaction volume that's coming. Um, you know, I, I think about my son who's going to be 20. I mean, we were talking the other day about, you know, what was life like before the internet? And he's looking at me like I'm crazy. I mean, what do you mean, do you mean? life before the internet? <laughs> uh, you know, oh dad, you know, roll down the window and tell me a, <laughs> tell me a story. It's like, roll down, what, what's roll down the window? I mean, he's never seen a car with a handle on it. So, you know, rotary phones and the like. So the expectation is there from the millennials that it'll just be available. And at the, at the experience at the mobile level will be real, it will be immersive and it'll be connected because I, unless I'm playing a game or doing something where I just need local mode, chances are enterprise applications yeah. are going to land on the enterprise. Well, on the system side too, they speak about millennials, that speaks to the DevOps culture. Most of the younger developers never loaded Linux on anything. They don't even know what packaged software is. Right. So they just want information on demand, they want infrastructure as code, as they say. So it's changing the mindset of what you have to provide. It how is. has that changed how you, you guys are organized and how do you speak to those millennials? I mean, on the infrastructure side too, not just the, the app developers. Uh, I think it's, it's, you've got to speak their language and as you said, DevOps is where it's, where it, it, it's, it, what it's all about. We see people now, instead of writing code, assembling code. I mean, not the old assembler that you know, <laughs> yeah. but you know, putting snippets together and, and all the different uh, APIs that you can now use. I mean, our partnership with Twitter, our partnership with Facebook, our partnership with Apple, all of these things are providing us with, with better ways. Our partnership with the Weather Channel allows us to pull weather data. There's, you know, insurance companies are, are pulling that information from a feed. So the programmers, if you will, become orchestrators. They become assemblers of all these different technologies. And as you said, they're going to they're gonna try it. They're going to go from dev to operate it and see and, and see and see again. In fact, this whole agile method is one, you know, small teams, get them on the field, get, you know, produce something. Minimum viable product. Well, you talk about the assembler of technology. So the innovation curve now seems to be shifting away from silicon. You know, the whole Moore's law. You guys have been talking about that toward more combining technologies. You mentioned a analytics and, and transaction systems. Do you see that happening? Do you see it actually? I mean, it's happening, but do you see it bending the curve of innovation yet? Even I would say even at a lower level, you could you don't have to go all the way up to, to that level. You could just talk about systems innovation, not just silicon innovation. Let's talk so about that. you know the combination of, of it's not just about as you said, Dave, it's not just about speeds and feeds. It's it, as John said, it's really about combining these things in new and unique ways. I mean the the, the memory speed between the processor and the, I'm sorry the speed between the memory and the processor of Power Eight is superior. So that's why people love the analytics workloads. You know, the number of threads is, is important to us. You know, we, we can get a lot more done when we have a lot more thread counts. So, you know, that's not about the processor speed. It's about the number of threads I can get going. So I think there are ways to overcome. We've also announced our investment of $5 billion in, in advanced technology. Uh, we, we made an announcement uh, last week about, you know, what we're doing with quantum computing and and you're going to see more around silicon photonics and context all kinds computing. Of things. Context computing. There's a lot of potential there, and I don't know. I don't have the crystal ball to say which ones of these are going to be off the charts, but some of them. But will. you're placing bets. We're placing. Well, there's, there's a lot of new right things here in Vegas. <laughs> well, there's a lot of a lot of new things get emerge. One of the big themes this year in the cube is with the shift and inflection point is that things that have never been done before, whether it's Internet of Things or something else, is new breakthroughs are happening. So I got to ask about the threading question. What do you guys envision software looking like? Because now you talked about a couple things that are kind of geeky, encryption on the processor, head, counts. head thread counts, memory speeds. memory speeds, this is all like really high-end stuff. So what do you envision developers doing with that? I mean, and, 
and share some insight around what you, you will ena enable for the stuff that was a challenge, you talk about the rotary phones and the roll down windows, I mean, this stuff that you could never, never do, even just five years ago that now are impossible. What do you envision the software market looking like? I think we, we increasingly see people adopting platform as a service capabilities or software as a service capabilities. And to me, that's not about the economics as much as it is about the agility, the flexibility that it provides. I, you know, I don't, you know, I was talking to a retailer here, their, their peak day is, you know, is, is New Year's. You know, they put everything on sale and all of a sudden they're off the charts, you know, and on needing scale. Um, some of these things you can predict, you know, he, he kind of knows what, what that day is when it's going to happen. Look at financial services, completely unpredictable. Who knows if China's going to lower the you know, interest rate or somebody else is going to do something or, or the, the Fed's going to say this. And, <laughs> oh my gosh, so you know, the ebbs and flows in, in the financial services markets is, is incredible. Yeah. So you know, I think in all of these cases, yeah. you know, the need for uh, quick provisioning and say, I'm going to pick up the slack, yeah. I'm going to take it. And, and as you guys know, not all workloads loan themselves or really lend themselves to saying, I'm going to run it part here in my place and part in your place. That, that depends on the location of the data, mm. right? Yeah. So I can, I can do analytics, but you know, transaction processing, probably not a great idea. I can do analytics in one place, but I'm going to want to co-locate my processor and my data, because data is huge. Yeah, yeah you can't moving. move data around anymore. You can't move I mean, data, you, you got to move the just... processor to the data. <laughs> so that it becomes consumption laptop. models, right? <laughs> I got to ask some philosophical questions that while we got you on theCUBE, since you're the brain trust at IBM. Oh, Dave and I uh -oh. love to talk about um, systems, like operating systems, and we're moving <laughs> to a world where the global internet is an operating system at it some is. level. Yep. So whether we're pinging Mark Andreessen on Twitter saying, hey, systems programmers are back, and you're in the systems business. So, um, two questions. What's the difference between something that has traction and something that's transformational? I mean, because products right now could be track, have traction, oh yeah, adoption, uptake, and then truly transformational products. From your perspective at IBM, how do you look at those two words, Tra traction, versus transformational. Well, and traction for us is a measure of whether something's getting traction, whether we're, we're seeing these use cases as you brought up and, and our products selling. I think transformation is, is a far more dramatic uh, term that says, you know, we're all transforming ourselves. And it's interesting for me to see the industries that are now being disrupted. I mean, obviously my industry is being disrupted. Your industry is being disrupted, right? Banking is being disrupted. Retail's being disrupted. I mean. You know, every one of us is going through this kind of a transformation. So the products that I need have to give me the speed, the flexibility, the connectivity, the, the you know, the ability to interconnect these things. I mean, that's really what I find transformational is, is somebody having that experience with a system of engagement that go, wow, I want to do that again. That was cool. And you know, behind the scenes, all kinds of work's going on to make sure that thing really stays and does what it says. And what products do you see right now in, in your wheelhouse that are the transformational? I think I think the work we're doing around open power is transformational. I think that, uh, you know, with 127 companies or, or members of the Open Power Foundation, I think the work we're doing, I think Flash is transformational. I got to tell you, seeing retailers, you know, do a speed test and, you know, have them do side-by-side -side websites, theirs and their competitors, and say, okay, purchase, and see how long it takes. And then they drop flash in, and they killed it, they nailed it. They improved their you know, yeah. response time, 140 140x improvement in response time. That's good traction. But transformation to me is about, well, okay, that may be important, it may not be. Did I, did I lose a customer if I didn't do it, you know, just like that, yeah. or, or, or did I not? We've talked about That's it a negative transformation. You're losing customers because of bad performance. You can, but you can also enable the impossible. What's today impossible, tomorrow could be possible. If, I, if you call in to a call center and I've got you on the phone and I can learn something in, the, in five seconds about you, it's really relevant. In five minutes, nobody cares. That's so, the analytics piece you guys are doing with this whole persona and the Twitter data and the Facebook data. You're blending I, in this active a, data set. a great story about a, a, over in Germany a, a, about a retailer who said, you know, we got complaints uh, and we're going to give refunds or we're going to give actually credits to people who complain. You know what happened? Everybody complained. Even people who weren't their clients complained <laughs> because they knew they were going to get a deal. Word got out. So you really have to connect the dots to say, well, did Dave, he just tweeted about me and something horrible. Is he actually my customer? Did he really just leave a store and the manager, you know, was nasty and all this? Or, 
or is it just he's fishing for you know it's money? A troll. He's trolling, yeah. right? Yeah, so, or the level of inspection on the keywords is not deep enough to get insight, other right. than the word you know the words they use. So the 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 value we can get from the Twitter data says I've got to be able to combine it with something else, like where were you in the store? What did happen? You're still in the parking lot. Can I get you to go back inside and, and uh, I'll give you a, a, you know something because I know it's really you. It's not just a troll. Quick word on security. You mentioned it yes. in your keynote. I always think of resource access control facility as the gold standard of, of security. Could you yeah. bring that level of gold standard to this new world and how do you do that with things changing? You talked about the perimeter and now looking for a detection and talk about the state of security and how IBM is bringing its ethos into the new world. I think, and, and our head of security, Brendan Hannigan, would do this far better than I could. He's the head of the new business unit uh, that runs, that's dedicated to security. But to me, it's a combination of the perimeter. You're not doing away with the perimeter, but you're also, and, and the other thing I think is that people think the more products they have, the more secure they are. And they, 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 they don't see that it's, you know, I've got overlap here and I've got gaps there. It's really hard to see. It's just like, well, just throw another product at it. So teams we've got, and Brendan's got a combination of, of, uh, of, of people that can actually do the work. So they've got services people and the software, obviously, uh, and some hardware as well in there that says, I can, I can do the work to see and I can analyze patterns of behavior so that it's not just keeping the bad guys out, it's knowing when they're in what they're doing. And, and if they're doing something they shouldn't be doing, stopping them from doing it. So to me, security can be brought to this world. It's just that it has to be managed as a, okay, I need one of those and one of those and one of those, not three of these and none of those. Because mm -hmm. that's the world we're in today. Tom, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We really appreciate your time. I know you're super busy. Uh, I'll give you the final word. Share it to folks the bumper sticker for the show. What's the vibe here for the folks that aren't here? IBM Edge this year. Put it in a little bumper I think it's I think it's future made. I think that w the things we're doing, we talk about is, you know, they've been around for a while, but everything that I've been talking about is about the future. I mean, the future is now, but we're making this stuff for the future. Tom Rosemann, Senior Vice President of Systems here at IBM Edge. This is theCUBE, live in Las Vegas. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you.